Wales Rally Great Britain has provided many memorable moments, with world titles being both won and lost here. You're the best in the world! This event may have moved from its traditional end-of-season position, but you can still expect plenty of drama. Those memorable moments have been provided by Subaru. Seven weeks in the last ten years is their record. And current Subaru golden boy Peter Solberg has won the last two. Can he make it a hat trick? Yeah, I hope so. But uh, it's a tough competition now and it's a good fight between many drivers, so I will definitely try my best. The only non-Subaru winner in the last five years is Marcus Granholm, who took his Peugeot 206 to victory in 2001. And if Gronholm, Solberg and indeed Marco Martin and Carlos Sainz have any designs on the Drivers' Championship, they need to win here and see current leader Sebastian Lowe take a tumble. He's running away with things at the moment with a 30 points lead. He doesn't need to take any risks. My first target is not, uh, is not absolutely to win, is to, to finish and to have some points. But uh, if we can fight uh, for the victory, we'll try to, to do it, sure. It's a similar story in the Manufacturers' Championship with Loeb Citroen team 35 points in front of Ford. <laughs> Wales Rally Great Britain is based in the Welsh capital of Cardiff. This event is made up of 19 gravel stages, a total competitive distance of 394 kilometres. <laughs> But the real battle starts on Friday. The crews head from the service park at Swansea to tackle the six stages that make up day one. And at a total distance of more than 180 kilometers, this makes up nearly half of the rally, a crucial day. Now, the plan was that the move from November to September might bring fine weather and dry surfaces, making this rally one of the fastest of the season. But at the start of day one, the British weather is doing its best to make this a traditional Wales rally. Overnight rain means championship leader Sebastian Lowe faces a long start. As the weather closes in, Hans Solberg, last year's Wales Rally winner, starts the stage. His aim is to win the last five rallies if he's to have any hope of catching load in the Drivers' Championship. But the conditions aren't helping his cause. 100. The rain has made the surface as wet as last November when Solberg won. The difference this morning, he's running second on the road to Lowe. Now Lowe is churning up the surface, making it muddier, leaving Petter at a disadvantage. A big disadvantage. As the clouds gather, Marco Martin's personal horizons are hardly clear either. Confirmed their participation in the championship in 2005, and Martin has been strongly linked with the move to Peugeot. There's no questioning his commitment here. A wry shake of the head from Martin. Whether preoccupied by the future or simply struggling with the present conditions, Martin makes more trouble on stage three. He's fourth overall, trailing low by nearly half a minute. Twice back in the early 90s. 
Sebastien Loeb. His lead stands at 19.5 seconds. Ron Holmes, Solberg and Martin, though, will all feel they're still very much in it. Outside the points, Armin Schwartz in the first of those three Skodas in the top 16. With the best part of 60 kilometers to go before service, a remote tire and fuel zone is set up. Here, two members of the service crew travel out into the forest to provide assistance. Sebastian, you've been very, very quick this morning. Yes, this morning everything wa was okay. I think we had the, the right uh, tire choice and uh, the car was going very well. I think also that to be first on the road uh, in this rally was uh, perhaps better than to be behind. Well, Petter, Sebastian has been very, very fast this morning. Yeah, I've gone really well, actually. I think uh, he had a good tire choice and everything worked out very well, but uh, fair dues, very good. What about Petter Solberg? Not on the pace like uh, we should have been, but um, we're going to try. We're going to try now. Whatever the weather, Wales Rally GB is always popular with the fans, who turn out in large numbers every year. <laughs> Not so popular for Peter Hervelin, who's retired in both of his previous attempts. This year, Martin Foley has blocked the Subaru's radiator with a car's overheating. His engine goes into safe mode, slowing him down. Difficulties too for Mark Higgins. He is the best placed British driver at 10th overall. Left 5 minus long. Left 5 minus long opens in over press and left 4 plus. Come on, Marky. That stall costs him precious seconds. And feet and left 4 plus. 17-year-old Matthew Wilson, making his WRC debut, is another driver of interest to the British fans, and he's of particular interest to Ford boss Malcolm Wilson, his father. In the works board, Russell Val starts to make some headway. He's seventh coming into stage four. Just his teammate Marco Martinstrom has continued, however. He definitely has a dose of adrenaline from 
breakfast. He's been driving with real aggression this morning, using every inch of the road to get the pace to the the long crest. They've been great. The next time, it's been three minus heavy. But, whoa. It's a massive moment. And it was very hard to get away with it. I think at this pace, he's really going to have to slow up a little bit because the next one will be too. Easy right, long time for three minus here. Seeing the Marco Martin ball, the champion Dave Holmes and not got yet. Left long. But he needs to win here to give himself a win. Twenty-five right. The strong as you can see, the road is starting to look more cautious. Rusty are probably seeing Sebastian thinking of his championship title at the moment. And now he has to contend with a lot more mud and gravel on the road. On the second run of the big stages. Finish, finish, finish. That's what he's thinking about, I'm sure. Marcus Bromholt is fastest on the second run through Brentford. And he's faster than Lowe on stage five, reducing the margin between them to 14.8 seconds overall. <laughs> Right into two, I find it like the second Biden. The crash. Now the Subaru overheating the air just as happens to hear them. still reduces the margin to 19 seconds. So the fight back has begun as Gronholm and Solberg eat into Loeb's lead. The three of them now covered by just 19 seconds. Marco Martin is fourth after an adventurous start to the rally. Marco, it sounds like you've had quite a morning. Yes, a lot of uh, exciting moments, but um, not so much uh, speed, more moments. The first one was in the last stage when they slid off the road on six gear and uh, went off like two times after that even in the same place. So it was like three times off the road and then ended back on the road, which was a bit of a surprise. It actually sounds like classic Welsh conditions out there. Yeah, yeah it's like normal. No difference to, to last year. It's exactly the same. Looking forward, can you reel Sebastian Lobin? He's been very quick. Yeah, but uh, we have found something with the car now, so should be okay. Both you and Petter, you've got to get your foot down to catch Sebastian. He's really setting the pace. Yeah, he was okay. He had a slight advantage to be first, to be honest. But then uh, second round. Okay, I hope we can catch him. Even on a wet Friday afternoon, rally fans have flocked to the Horses Arena, a purpose-built spectators area. With the date change, the organisers had hoped to see sunglasses, not umbrellas, but the Indian summer's first. <laughs> Fans of the defending world champion are well represented in Wales. Peter Solberg is giving them a performance to remember. This is the longest stage of the rally, and the Norwegians hoping to use 32 and a half kilometres to make further inroads into Loeb's lead. Early shot for right bus. Last year, Loeb led on the early stages, but Solberg took the rally lead in the afternoon. With 19 seconds to make up, that might be beyond him. But he does beat the Frenchman, reducing the gap between them to 12 seconds overall. The Marcus Bromholt Rail has left that up the hunting ground. He comes into the stage 4.2 seconds ahead of Solberg, but can he pull away from him? Or will the margin shrink? Well, he's already slower. And that's it, he's lost second place. Stage is clear for Marcus. Marcus, with the splits we were hearing, you'd have dropped behind Petter. How was it? <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't know. I, I was not confident when it went driving. Not at all. I don't know why. <laughs>
His teammate Harry Rovenpower is having an equally torrid time. Remember day one in Argentina? Rovenpower lost acres of time when his power steering failed. Same fault to four rallies on, and same effect. Rovenpower drops 25 seconds. The third 307, Daniel Carlson's making a debut appearance, and he wants to make a good impression. The young Swede hopes the now. fans can help get the 307 on the More ditch. people! More people! Yes! More! Behind the car! Behind the car! Not enough manpower or horsepower. He's burnt out his clutch and his rally's over. So Peter Solberg, the man on the move, into second position and now just 12 seconds behind rally leader Loeb, who must be beginning to look over his shoulder to the defending world champion on the charge. Sebastian Petter starting to put a bit of pressure on you. Yes, he's coming back. Uh, I think that the conditions uh, are not always uh, the same this morning and uh, sometimes uh, I think he has a bit uh, an advantage with his car, with his tyre, sometimes it's me. And uh, but now it's it's very close. Petty, you're really starting to turn up the heat on Sebastian Loeb now. Yeah, it's good. Uh, that was the plan, and uh, after we got the suspension sorted this morning, everything had been working very well. You seem full of confidence. Yeah, it's, it feels very good. It feels very good. Same as the last two years. Yeah. It's a bit early to talk about that sort of thing. Early, but the things is going very well. Historically, the fans have always turned out in force for the Great Britain Rally. Its popularity and profile is such that the Welsh Assembly were persuaded to give financial support to the event. The only one in the WRC calendar to have the local government as the main sponsor. Well, when the uh, opportunity came up for to acquire the sponsorship of what was the British leg of the World Rally Championship, uh, I instructed my officials under WDA to go out and seriously negotiate because we saw this as a way of promoting Wales and pro showing Wales as a, a great showcase in terms of engineering, industry, motorsports and tourism. The second run through the longest stage. It's early evening in Wales. Patches of fog and smells of heavy rain make Rio even more of a challenge. In tenth place overall is Armin Schwartz. In the highest place, Skoda. Just one stage to go to get all three of the Czech manufacturer's cars home safely at the end of day one. But that is the end of Schwartz's rally, and the smoke in the car is the Skoda's fire extinguisher, set off by the impact. <laughs> Mikko Herbman said earlier today he was enjoying the Wales Rally GB. These ones are new to him though, as the young Finns never got beyond the early stages, retiring on Charles Coe for the past two years. Trinola very nearly sees him off this year. That was a close call, but he makes it for the second day. In the second Ford, Francois Duval has concerns of his own. The focus's brakes have failed. An impact made the chassis of the as for Harry Rovenpera just behind him on the table, he can't capitalize. A collision with the rocks damaged his gearbox. He's stuck in second gear. Okay. Kolme. Mind you, at least the fact of the rock means we can't blame those 307 gremlins. This time, he drops to eighth. Further up the leaderboard, teammate Marcus Gronholm wants to regain second place from Petter Solberg. And his split time suggests he's on course for a blistering time. Perhaps the balance is tipped a little too far towards aggression. The flying fin hit a gatepost on the heart section of the stage. Remember, in rallying, caution does play a part. We should do. Grumholm gets out to inspect the damage. But unfortunately, he can't get back in. 
Marcus, obviously you've hit something. Yeah, yeah, in a high speed, I hit the green, uh, you know, pole. When you have, when you have two poles and the gate. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so Solberg has the chance to pull further away from the field. And he does. Outside the top three, Marco Martin will have to put his foot down if he wants to get on the podium. Our teammate Francois Duval is now behind Miko Hervenen in seventh. Mark Higgins in a Ford Focus is the leading British driver in ninth, two places in front of the leading Skoda of Tony Gardemeister. The forecast for day two was for a marked improvement in the weather, but if anything, conditions have got even worse. Three repeated stages around Landovery make up the main part of this middle day on the Wales Rally GB. The crews then head south for a run through the Margham Park test before finishing at the Cardiff Super Special. That's eight stages totaling 121 kilometres. This is real rain, none of your drizzle and damp. It's the real soaking, saturating stuff. Sebastian Loeb starts day two defending a slim 8.4 second lead. But will his tactic be to attack with panache or to drive with calculated defence? We've seen him think championship points rather than victory in previous rallies, but he seems to want to win in Wales. Peter Solberg needs to match or better him. But the prince of his heart to make a push on day one doesn't seem to be with him. Solberg is 1.6 seconds slower on stage 8. One right pass tighter. As for fourth place Marco Martin, the podium position must be in his sights. One hundred to stop. But this is just another warning. Martin's had a fair few moments in this rally. Will another end his hopes or make him back off? Marcus Grunholm's in trouble before the day even starts. Marcus, looks like you've got some major problem. What, what's happening? We have a problem with gearbox. So we have no fourth gear. Part, sometimes we have it, sometimes not. So Just on the road section? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly, bang. So, could be that my fight is once again finished. But maybe not, because despite another episode of the transmission saga for Persia, Ronhold is second fastest yeah, on stage one. Taking yeah, stage one, Sebastian Lowe, by just a tenth of a second. And on stage nine, he's fast again, battling the car and the conditions, and as ever, 100% committed. Oh, oh. Another yeah, impact. Yeah, yeah. Remember, he hit a gate post on the last yeah. stage of day one. This is the second time in three years that Epind has caught him out. And for the last two years, he's been forced to retire in Wales. But this time, he gets going again. Not for much longer, though. Just after the stage, Gronholm has to admit defeat. Marcus, can you tell us what's happened? We had a small problem with the gearbox and, and okay, nothing to do. I made the, after that a mistake because maybe I was not concentrated. One junction, I turn and bang, I touch the right uh, right um, tire in the met metal pole just behind the strobo mail. Maybe I, I, I don't see the, so well the, where, where the corner is so. That's it. Back on the stage, Mikko Herpenen benefits from Grothold's retirement. This is all new territory for him, and the conditions are hazardous.
Suzuki had a close call on day one, remember? this isn't as bad, but it will prevent any kind of complacency. Henning Solberg in his privately entered 206 has already had a scare on stage eight. This new, narrow and flooded section of effort, just where Heerbenen went into the scenery. Petter's elder brother has another fright. So it now looks like a two-way battle for first place between Loeb and Solberg on the Inmarsat leaderboard. Marco Martin inherits third place, while his teammate Francois Duval won stage nine and moves ahead of Hervenen to fifth. There are no changes in the top positions on stage 10, but Loeb does extend his lead by another three seconds. Perhaps surprising his rivals, he might have been expecting more of a safety first approach. He has said that he does like the wet and muddy conditions. Even when visibility is difficult in the mist, and he's crap at speeds. You know, and he's clearly enjoying it. He really wants to win here for sure. There is absolutely no other reason to risk anything and push this hard. And just look at his telemetry here, he's 58. He's really pushing right to the limit. I tell you what, Petter, he's going to take some leaking. You must be really getting used to big battles with Petter Solberg now. <laughs> yes, uh, it's, he's always pushing very hard, and uh, so yes, I, I begin to be to be used to. And uh, but okay, it's uh, good fun. But this morning he was a bit hungry, but he was uh, he thought he would beat me uh, immediately, and uh, he saw it was a bit difficult. So now it's a good fight. Sebastian was expecting you to be a bit quicker this morning. What's happened? No, I don't think so. He was expecting that because it was the same as yesterday morning. Uh, seems like uh, his tires and stuff is working much better uh, when it's so slippery in the mornings. So we will see now the second time through. That's going to be the interesting. Remote tire and refueling stops have been introduced on this rally because the stages are so spaced out in the Welsh countryside. A fact that also means there are more than 900 kilometres of road sections in between the stages, and on this rally that really is an added hazard for the drivers. Last year, several were convicted of speeding on public roads, and the police even stopped Marcus Grohl from continuing in the rally because his car was considered unroadworthy. I understand that you say, but I, I can go, so I want to say the last word. <laughs> OK, but you're not going. OK, yeah, OK, okay. I understood. Now this year, Gronholm's teammate Daniel Carlson found himself in hot water on day one because of the lack of tread on his tyres. The tyres are dangerous. Your car is damaged. The drivers believe their skills and the high specification of the cars should be taken into consideration, but the police insist that tough stops is necessary. We'll be looking at uh, vehicles, uh, vehicle speed, uh, around the area because obviously that is a main contributing factor to any collision. Uh, we've already had some 40 people killed in this force area uh, this year alone. The afternoon begins with a repeat of the morning stages and rather brighter weather. But it's a dark time for Skoda's Yanni Kassanen. He was a respectable 12th, but hydraulic problems end his rally. His teammate Tony Gardemeister is the highest placed Skoda. Stages take their toll on his tyres. Gardemeister loses time and drops to 10. Ahead of him is the top British driver Mark Higgins. And he is in the points, placed 8th overall. Just ahead, the oldest of the WRC contingent isn't having such an enjoyable time. The limit to the number of tyres available to the crew is to the combined with the unexpected wet weather means Carlos Sainz has run out of the running tyres for these conditions.
what was the stage like with those tyres? Yeah, it's not the best condition, but that's the way it is. We, we have used all the tyres now, all the very soft. We didn't expect so much rain. time-consuming concerns for Ford's Marco Martin. A problem with his Focus's engine Three means he's short of power and is hemorrhaging time. Come on, old girl. He loses nearly 50 One. seconds Rickety. over stages 11 Lap and 12. Long tightness to six minus. He's now nearly a minute behind second place, Petter Solberg. Stage 11 and carries the part onto stage 12. 13. Lots of grip here. This won't help him catch Sebastian Loeb. Two left minus Titans, one Titan. It could mean that the championship leader has stopped on the way again. He's 15.5 seconds ahead of Solberg at the start of stage 12. This narrow, flooded road is new to the Wales Rally GB. It's where Mika Herpen and Henning Solberg and most disastrously Marcus Bronholm have their problems. And we've already seen it's cost Peter Solberg a few seconds. So, can Lowe extend his lead? It looks as if it'll be close. No, Lowe's slower. By 1.7 seconds, his lead now 13.8 seconds. On to stage 13, and the weather's looking even better. The roads are drying out, and the sun is making a guest appearance in Wales. And things are looking better for Solberg, too. He wins his fifth stage of the rally, beating Sebastian Lowe by 3.2 seconds. Six left plus 18, we're minus two. Six right, extra long. The to keep is here. still 10.6 seconds, but Solberg loves the challenge. And this duel with Lee Lowe is certainly that. Third place, Marco Martin's still struggling. His engine's lost power, and he's losing time. At the end of stage 13, he's more than two minutes off the pace. And that means that Carlos Sainz can see a battle hotting up. And the Spaniard is just 15.9 seconds behind Martin, the second Citroen scenting a podium position. And that's a temptation rally drivers seldom resist. Through virtual spectator, we can see that on the straight, Martin's not losing too much time to Sainz. Yes, but look how much later Martin is breaking into this next tight corner than Sainz. That's because he knows when he accelerates away on the exit, he's going to lose time. What exaggerates his power loss even more is that this section is uphill. There's nothing more frustrating than to lose vital seconds through no fault of your own. Martin now faces an anxious wait to find out if his engineers can fix the problem at service. Both Sainz and Martin are a long way behind the two drivers who've been dominating this rally. Loeb leads now by less than 11 seconds. And he has the added concern that he could be running out of the tyres he needs for the conditions. Before the rally, everybody talked about the sun shining and the tyre choice. Have you got the right tyres in your arsenal? Can you rely on the ones that are going to be correct for the stages? No, not really. Uh, the problem is that I had to use uh, some old tyres every time this morning again. Uh, we have some tyres for the three first stages and I had to use it again for the three next. Uh, and so I think I lost a bit of time for that. So in effect, it's these new regulations that we're using during the rally that are, are putting a bit of pressure on you? Yes, uh, it's what I say always. You, you can lose uh, the rally on Monday uh, when you choose the tyre. Uh, if you don't have the right tyre choice, uh, you can lose the rally before to, to start it. Uh, uh, in some rally like here, you can have very, very bad weather and so you need very soft tyre and you can have sunny. It could have been sunny all the weekend, 25 degrees, and for that we need very hard. So, and we don't have enough packed uh, tyre to choose to, to have everything. For now, the Welsh countryside shows its warm and friendly face as the crews take to the longest stage of the day, Margo. Remaining Skoda, Tony Gardemeister is already more than eight minutes behind the leading cars. And this could be a rally at the moment. Come to push! Come to push! 
Bush, help! In the tug of war between the fans and the Skoda, the fans finally win, but Gardemeister loses another 29 minutes in the process. In seventh place at the start of the stage is the remaining Peugeot. Harry is chasing and catching Mika Hervinen. He meets the young Finn by more than 10 seconds to overhaul him and takes sixth place. Up ahead, Marco Martins back on full power. Six left lock lock, loose exit. Third left right. Six left lock. He's constant in this bandit, shut them by just a solitary second. Better Solberg has even more cause to push. This is the Norwegian's last real chance of the day to get closer to the rugby league. It's great to have a fight in your hands, but much better to feel you have a realistic chance of winning it. And his pace is electric on stage 14. Sebastian Loeb, though, isn't letting go easily. He is slower than Solberg by 3.8 seconds, partly thanks to a slight mistake towards the end of the stage. His lead, now just 6.8 seconds. But he's a long, long way from being beaten yet. And Loeb took back half a second on the final stage of the day, the Cardiff Super Special, the latest instalment of this enthralling Wales Rally GB battle. I must say he has been really on the case today. Things have been working very well for him. I've been taking three seconds uh, over the whole day, and uh, I think it will be a different pace tomorrow morning, definitely. How much have you got left? We will see tomorrow morning. Everything is possible for the moment. It's only I have a lead from set seven seconds only, and uh, tomorrow we have three stages of 30 kilometers. So. I think it's like nothing, and uh, for that we will have to, to fight tomorrow again. There's no chance of a Sunday morning lion for Petter Solberg and the Subaru mechanics, who are busy trying to squeeze an extra ounce of performance from their Impreza. While over at Citroen Championship and rally leader Sebastian Loeb takes time out to talk tactics with the boss. Loeb has three full stages and one super special stage to negotiate before he can claim victory in the Wales Rally GB. But Solberg is breathing down his neck and with 90 kilometers of competitive driving still remaining on this final day, there's more than enough time for him to overhaul the Frenchman. A bright morning for what promises to be a thrilling finale to Wales Rally GB. And Carlos Sainz has set himself a target for day three. Target a podium position. He starts the stage just 17.9 seconds behind third place Marco Martin. Martin's aim, of course, is to keep his place. On stage 16, he's 3.5 seconds faster than Sainz. The margin now 21.4 seconds. But the big battle involves defending champion Petter Solberg. He won the last two Wales rallies and he still has ambitions to defend his championship crown. So the Norwegian is desperate to take the rally lead from Sebastian Loeb. appears driven as much to prevent Solberg from getting a Wales hat-trick as to extend his championship lead. He's not backing off. Solberg's ahead of him on the stage, and with only 10 kilometers gone, he's already two seconds faster. The Norwegian is on the limit here. The these roads are fast and flowing. Full throttle through these narrow sections will benefit a quick time, and Petr is certainly trying here. Whoa, he's, he's much tighter than Petr expected. He's had to overcorrect to get back online. Oh, he was very lucky. A quick brush with the scenery there. But it's a warning for Petr. A fast but more controlled approach is needed. 
Now that was a new section for this year, and he's not drifting on his face notes, so, you know, that wasn't a at all. Um, but just look at the the line he's taking there, using every inch of the road to gain valuable seconds. But that slide has given Solo a disadvantage in the duel. In a battle this close, every little error is incredibly costly. I went off the road, I uh, got uh, stuck a little bit. So, uh, I, 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 I. That mishap cost Solberg five seconds, but Loeb is still under pressure because the Norwegian tore through the rest of the stage. Loeb was 7.3 seconds. Just 1.3 seconds. He must be grateful the Norwegian didn't have a clear run. A bit too much pressure for you this morning? Well, of course, you know, it's that's life. You have to push. We're not driving for second places, we're driving for first. And yeah, it's always a big risk in, in that speed. If you look on the inboard or outside, you will see it's quite amazing pictures. 8.6 behind Sebastian, 60 k's left to go, can you do it? I could have done it this morning, so I can do it again. That easy? Nothing is easy, then you would have done it. Easy or not, Solberg still thinks he can catch Loeb. Behind them, Marco Martin looks fairly secure in third place, with Carlos Sainz more than 20 seconds adrift. So the Red Dragon Rally is giving us a nerve-wracking final day, but away from that dramatic duel at the top of the table, Mikko Herpinen is making history of his own. After two retirements here, the young Finns come to talk with the players, and though not setting the world alight, he's a solid support at the end of stage 17. Just a place ahead of him, Harry Rovenpera in the remaining Peugeot has overcome power steering problems and gearbox glitches to be set fair for a point-scoring finish. And in fourth place overall, Francois Duval's done himself no disservice. With three stage wins on day two, and a top four time on his second run through Ronda, he's underlining team boss Malcolm Wilson's view that he's the most improved young driver in the WRC. But the thrills and spills of rallying are most electrifyingly emphasised by the duel between this man and a Solberg. <laughs> Sebastian Loeb on all the splits. He's giving everything for this fight. I think my front diff is broken. It's a, it's a very bad noise. Front diff or center diff. Very bad noise. So, uh, struggling, struggling. So, tense times for Solberg, but what's the damage as far as Loeb's lead is concerned? He can't equal the pure pace of the pursuing Subaru. But how much time will he lose? and a half second lead really is under serious threat now. 5.1 seconds slower, only a tiny three and a half seconds now separate them with two stages to go. Who can handle the pressure? This must be incredibly tough for the chasing Solberg. What bad luck after such a fantastic chance. He's desperate to know what exactly is wrong with the car, and on the way to stage 18 in Morgan Park, he finds out there's a problem with his front left wheel bearing. I don't think I can come through the stage. It looks, seems very, very bad. Very bad. What kind of difference does it make to the car, for the general public to know, like, what difference will it make? Well, the wheel can fall off, that's one thing. And it's very hard in the steering. And uh, uh, it starts to vibrate on the, on the brakes, so... Not good, not good. It's last chance saloon for Solberg, and he'll be wondering how long that wheel there will be. Perhaps he'll feel it's better to stay safe in second place than risk it all for the win. But with less than four seconds to make up, pride at stake, it's a tough call to make. Sebastian Loeb's defended his lead for more than 300 kilometers. With just 30 to go, he must be desperate to keep ahead of the charging Norwegian. And Loeb's moving, uncharacteristically, from fast to dangerously fast. Solberg, though, might well be nursing the car to make sure the wheel-bearing problem doesn't become terminal. Loeb 
hasn't made a result changing mistake all season, so Solberg can't rely on driver error if they get a win. And it looks as if the Frenchman is going to be faster over the first half of the stage. He's been eager to get his sixth win of the season here in Wales. Yes, 3.3 seconds quicker. Though that slight overshoot might cost him a little bit of time. And Solberg is blitzing through the second half of Marga, where incidentally he took time out of Lowe on the first run through. Make your own luck, they say, and determination as much as downright top-line speed sees Solberg back in with Lowe. And that's a sign of real commitment. So how has Loeb's over-aggression and the Subaru's speed affected the rally lead? Just three and a half seconds between them, remember? Well, this is astonishing. He's lost the lead. The story of the rally amazingly turned on its head in just one stage. Loeb now trails Solberg by nearly six seconds. And with just the Cardiff Super Special to go at less than three kilometers, it's highly unlikely Loeb can regain the lead. Unless, of course, something dramatic happens to Solberg. He seems to be heading towards a hat-trick of winners as well, and that is a remarkable achievement. And winning here was a great for him. Although not quite as sweet a victory as he had last year, when he did become the world champion. <laughs> he must be going through. He had a wheel bearing problem going into Margam. He's had a long road section down the motorway. And now he still has to complete the stage. And he's still not sure whether this wheel bearing is going to last after all. It does appear as if Solberg is not just victory though. How must Sebastian Loeb be feeling now? Sebastian really did have far more to lose in Wales as he fought for the outright win. Now second is better than nothing. And he has a far more champion for 2004. And as far as that championship race is concerned, Solberg said he needed to win the last five rallies to have a chance of retaining his crown. And victory here is just over half a minute away now. You've got to remember, he's driving a £470,000 rally car here, and he's just hoping that his £100 wheel bearing is going to last to the finish line. <laughs> Solberg. As always, there's a huge army of his fans here to support him. And nobody celebrates a rally win quite like Peter Solberg. He really is the showman of the WRC. The final winning margin is 6.3 seconds. Loeb led for 16 of the 19 stages here, but he's still waiting for a first win in the Wales Rally GB. Marco Martin's six points for third place just about keep him in the race for the world title. And Carlos Sainz's fourth place makes it a good weekend for Citroën. Sebastian, you couldn't quite hold off Petter Solberg, but a great rally for you. Yes, it was a, a nice race. Uh, I think uh, we were leading all the all the time, and uh, just in the in the last stage, uh, he, he was uh, he was very fast. And uh, in the ten last last kilometer, he was 12 seconds faster than us, and we don't understand understand why. So we I think we have to to work a bit. That was uh, three in a row, and that was the hardest rally I've ever done in my whole life. I think the most difficult and. Uh, so technical, so many type of conditions, and Sebastian, who you know had a brilliant performance on this rally. So, oh yeah, I was nervous on that super special now. <laughs> With just four more rallies left, Sebastian Loeb is still the overwhelming favourite for the world title. Carlos Sainz and Marco Martin are clinging to a mathematical chance of catching him, but Petter Solberg is his only real rival. Citroën have also strengthened their grip in the manufacturer's table, extending their lead over Subaru to another three points here. 
podium, Marsad's star of the rally award goes to Ford, who now scored manufacturers' points for 40 consecutive rallies. A level of consistency stretching back nearly three years, which no other team can match. <laughs> Next stop on the WRC calendar is the Rally d'Italia, which is moving from the tarmac roads of the mainland to the gravel of the mountain roads of Sardinia. But here in Wales, it's a Norwegian who's celebrating, and of course a Welshman, that's co-driver Phil Mills. And don't write this pairing off for the world title just yet. Keep up to date with all the news of the World Championship running. Check out its official website at www.wrc.com. But from Wales, it's goodbye.